God to enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Thank you, Jesus. When we walk through that door, we should have had a praise on our mouths. Joy in our heart entering the sanctuary. Giving God the glory, giving him the honor and the praise because he is worthy. Not allowing anything to be exalted higher than him. And we just want to start lifting him up right now before we start making our petitions known. We want to lift him up right now. We don't want to exalt anything or anybody higher than him. We want to cast everything down at his feet right now. Any sickness, we will not exalt to higher than him. We're going to cast it down at his feet, knowing that by his stripes we are healed. Anything that's going on in our lives, naturally as well as emotionally, mentally, we want to throw all that stuff down at his feet right now. We're not going to exalt anything and anybody higher than him. We want to empty out ourselves right now because we want to get into a place of praise and get into a place of worship. We don't want to be distracted. We don't want to have our minds on anything or anybody else. We don't want to have our thoughts wandering around. We're not going to worry about who here and who not. We're not going to worry about what they doing and what they're not doing. We're not going to worry about what they wearing or what they not wearing. We're going to concentrate on God right now. We want to empty all ourselves out right now. We want to completely and totally be empty. Because we want God to enter into our hearts and into our minds. We want to give him every part of us. Our mind, our hearts, our body, and even our souls. We want to praise and worship him with everything that is within us. We don't want to hold anything back. We don't want to be modest or we don't want to be too cute. We want to get rid of any and everything that's even heavy within our hearts. Even now, I'm going to give you guys some red pens and some yellow paper. Up. 
we're going to begin to lift him up as the King of Kings and the Lords of Lords. We're going to be able to lift him up as just who he is. It's so many times in our lives and even in our bodies that we simply don't even feel like praising and worshiping him. But I guarantee you that if you get in a place of praise and a place of worship, that blessings will come down. When I stood up here and tell you that when you get into a place of praise and worship, you're not going to be thinking and concentrating on nothing but God. And if you are concentrating on nothing but God, everything else is going to have to cease. Everything else is going to have to disappear. There's nothing that is too hard for God that he cannot accomplish. There is nothing that is too hard for God. There's no situation that you're going through that's so difficult that God cannot fix. There's no sickness in your mind, your body, your home, your life, your heart that God cannot heal. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can think or even imagine. It's so many times that we feel inside of our bodies and even inside of our minds that we get real weary and tired and we feel as if we cannot take it or it's just too much that we can bear. When I sit up here and tell you that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly and there's nothing that is too hard that he cannot fix, and there is nothing that you are going through that he is not aware of and in the midst of him even being aware of that thing you need to be aware that he holds everything in the very palm of his hand there is nothing that he cannot simply speak a word and it can surely be done according to what you believe inside of you according to your belief According to your belief, according to your belief, be it unto you, says the Lord of hosts. Oh God, we just want to lift you up right now. We just want to lift you up right now, God, and we just want to glorify you, God. We want to glorify you for being the King of kings and the Lords of lords. We want to glorify you for being just who you are, God. And you are all omnipotent and omnipresent. one of a kind. And we just want to bless you and we just want to glorify you right now, God. You said that if we lift you up, God, you will draw all men unto you, God. I'm asking you to draw your people unto you right now, Father God. Oh, God, we're lifting you up right now, God, with the very fruit of our lips. Because you created us to worship your God. You created us to lift you up, God. You created us, Father God, be for your pleasure, God. And we're going to bless you, God. We're going to glorify you. And we're going to lift you up, God. We're going to bow down to your Father. We're going to bow down to your God. He cut that it'll go see you. And everything, Father God, is trying to come up against us in our bodies, God. We're going to lay it down at your feet because we know you are able to heal. Anything that's trying to come up against us in our minds, God. We're going to lay it down at your feet because we know you are able to regulate the mind. Oh God, we're going to lift you up, God. We're not going to allow anything to be exalted higher than your God. Because we know we are fighting through you, God. Oh God, we know we are more than conqueror. And we're going to bless you, God. We're going to bless you for who you are, God. There's none like you, Father God. You are our prophet. God. You are the Akashan that it will go see. Oh God, you are a healer on today, Father God. You are a provider, Lord. Oh Mama, the Akashan that it will go see. You are the one that got the insulin that we need, God. You are the one that got the antidote that we need, God. You are the one that got the vaccine that we need, God. You are the one, Father God, that got all the Oh God, and we just want to lift you up, God, for being just who we need you to be when we need you to be it. Oh God, we're going to glorify you, God. We're going to give you every part of us, God. We're not going to hold anything back, Lord. We're not going to be modest, God. We're not going to be too cute. Oh God, we're not going to hold our idea. I got shot that it all goes. Worship, Father God, from the very pit of our soul, Lord. 
from the very muscle of our beings, God, from the inner parts of our hearts. We're gonna bless you and praise you, God. We're gonna give it to you even in spite of our hates. We're gonna give it to you even in spite of our pains. We're gonna give it to you in spite of everything, Father God, that's trying to even come up against us. We're gonna give it to you, God, because you are worthy of it. You are worthy of it, God. And we're gonna tell you how much we love you. We're gonna tell you how much we adore you. We're gonna tell you how much you mean to us, God. We may have cheated you at some point and not given you everything that is due to you. Oh God, but we're gonna make up for it right now. We're gonna make up for it right now. We're gonna give it to you, God. We may have slipped away and doing what we wanna do, but right now, God, we wanna come back before you, God. We're bending and bowing down to you. We may have got slack and slow for the things that is required, but God, we're gonna come to you right now, and we're gonna repent. Oh, God, because you sent your son, Jesus. Oh, God, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. You didn't want us to be shackled down. You didn't want us to be in bondage. You did not want us to be in a place, Father God, where we could not be free. Oh, God, I'm asking you that the Akashan that it don't go see you. To hear our cries on today, God. To hear our cries on today, God. We cry out to you right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we opening up our hearts. And we opening up our minds. And we opening up our bodies that you may take residence. That you may live inside of us, God. Because we know if we got you inside of us, God. We know, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that nothing can come against us. Nothing can stand before us. And nothing will overcome us. Oh, God, we're coming to you right now, God. We're coming to you right now, God. And we're opening up ourselves unto you, Lord. We're opening up ourselves unto you right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And knowing and believing, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that everything that you wrote in your word, God, that it is true. Knowing and believing, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that everything that you spoke, God, it is true. We're giving it all to you right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We are pouring ourselves, Lord. We are pouring ourselves right now, God. We are pouring ourselves, God, because it's due to you, Lord. It's due to you, God. God, because you did so much for us. You did so much for us, Father God. And it's so many times that we take it for granted. It's so many times, Father God, that we're not more mindful of it. But we want to be mindful of it right now, God. We want to be mindful of it right now, God. We always come into your bed. We always come to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, asking you for something. We boldly come to you and make our petition known. Oh, God, but right now, before we go any further, God, we want to tell you how much we love you. We want to tell you how much we adore you. Because you did so much for us, Father. You thought about us, Father God. Even when we was not even into existence, you thought about us, God. You thought about us then that we may be here now. Oh, God, and we want to thank you for that, God. We want to thank you all today, Father God. We want to thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives. We want to thank you, Father God, for looking down on us, God. We want to thank you for opening up our eyes this morning, God. We want to thank you for allowing us, Father God, to get up out the bed, God. We want to thank you, God, for the use of our arms and even the use of our legs. We thank you for letting us walk, talk, eat, sleep, smell, taste, feel, hear, touch, God. We want to thank you for the food on our table, the clothes on our backs, the roof of our head, and even the car that you give us to drive, God. We take nothing for granted, God. It's so many times that we complain about so many things, God. We complain about the car we're driving. We complain about the job we have. We we complain about the sickness in our bodies. We complain about who do and who don't. We complain about who is and who ain't. We complain about everything, God. But right now, God, we're not going to complain, God. We're simply going to say thank you, God. Because you thought about us even when we weren't thinking about ourselves. We want to thank you right now, Father God. Even for covenants in your blood. 
up and hide us behind your cross. Oh God, you could have left us out there, God. You could have allowed the lions and the beasts of the land to devour us. But you thought about us, God. You thought about us so much, Lord, until you gave us your son. You gave us your son, God, because you had so much grace. That grace you gave us that we did not even deserve it. That grace you bestowed upon us, Father God, and we did not even earn it. You gave it to us, God, and we just want to thank you for it, God. We want to thank you on today, Father God, for even keeping us all during the night from all hurt, harm, and danger, seen and unseen. Oh, God, you could have allowed that rob and that murderer to come, God. You could have even allowed the death angel to cross our threshold, but you didn't, God. You proved in our bodies, God. You gave us life yet again. Oh, God, and all the mercies that you bestow upon us, God. New every day, God. And we know that the Akashana, we are not even worthy of it, God. But you are so merciful towards us, God. Oh, God, and all that loving kindness, God. Even when we was a wretch undone. Even when we have evil thoughts. Even when we do evil things. Oh, God, your loving kindness, God, is extended upon us, God. And we want to thank you, God. We want to thank you for the clarity, God. Even when we don't see, I got shot in the local sea. Even when we don't understand the thing. Even when we step out on the thing and do our own thing. Oh, God, he got in the local sea. We want to thank you, Father God. He got in the local sea. We want to thank you, God, for the provisions that you give us, God. Oh, God, you allow us to have so much. You wanted us to be free, God. Even from our own thoughts. Even from our own mind. You wanted us to be free, God. That's why you sent your son, Jesus, that we may be free. Oh, God, you did not want us to cling to the dust. You did not want us to die in our sins and iniquities, God. Oh, God, you sent Jesus that he could do so much for us, God. He poured so much for us, God. And we just want to thank you for it, God. We want to thank you, God. We want you to know that we appreciate your thoughts of us, God. Even when we think that you ain't thinking about us, God. We want you to know how much we appreciate you, God. We want you to know how much we love you, God. And we know and realize that we are into existence only because of you. And we cannot do anything without you, God. We are nothing without you, God. We could be nothing without you, God. And we just want to glorify you right now, God, and give you everything that we have on today, God. Oh, God, we just want to bless you right now, God. We want to bless you even in spite of the discomfort we may be experiencing in our lives. Because it's just the Akashat that it don't go see. Oh, God, we just want to bless you and reverence you right now, Father God, because you are worthy of it, God. Oh, God, he can let it go shut and let it look go see. Oh, God, he can let it look go see. Every prayer that we put before you, Father God. Oh, God, we know the Akashat that it look go see. I take it, not let it go see. We thank you for the mediator of the Akasana. Oh God, we thank you, God. He got in the local sea. We thank you, Jesus, for standing in the gap for us. We thank you for making a petition for us, Jesus. I get in the local sun. Oh God, we thank you. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, God. Uh, we want you to know we appreciate you, Lord. You, Lord. <laughs> we want you to know that we know who you are, God. 
We know who you are, Father God, and it's nothing that we are doing on our own. It's the Akashan that it'll go see. You are the one that shows us that favor, God. You are the one that give us what we need, God. You are the way make of it all, Father. You are the one that's steal the waters, God. You are the one that settle the waves, God. You are the one that give us light in that dark place. You are the one that give us joy in the midst of sadness. You are the one that give us completeness in the midst of emptiness. You are the one, Father God, you are the one that God that runs our cups over God. You are the one, Father God, that give us the plenty. <laughs> Jesus, thank you for the plenty. Jesus, thank you for the plenty. God, he can't let it out. I need to go shut it in a casilla. Thank you, God. He called my man. He can't shut it in a casilla. Thank you, Father God. He can't let it out. I need to go shut it in a casilla. Thank you, Father God. He can't let it out. I need to go shut it in a Thank you, God, for the plenty. He can't let it out. I need to go shut it Thank you, God, for the showering and the overshadowing of your power. Thank you, God, for the retribution that you give your people while they need it in our Castilla. Thank you, God, for the oneness and the wholeness of your glory. Oh, God, we just want to thank you, God. We just want to thank you, Father God. For your majestic power, Lord. He can't let it look on Syria. For we know it's by your power and by your my God. Maybe I can shun it and it will look on Syria. Thank you, Lord. He called my money. I can shun it and it look on Syria. Oh, God, I just want to thank you. I even want to thank you in advance for what you are about to do for your people. I want to thank you for the little 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 Oh God, we welcome you even the more, God. Oh God, now me, I got shot, did it go see, I take it. Uh, oh God, I'm me, I got shot. Uh, I'm standing in the gap for your people today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. That you will cover me, your blood, and me, and your cross, give me your strength, give me your peace, give me your hope, give me your direction. Restore your people into their proper positions on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Let them embrace your glory, Father God, in the name of Jesus, and let them not forget just who you are. Oh God, give me a kashat little local son. Give your people your strength, Father God, even when they feel like they are at their weakest. Give your people, Father God, in the name of Jesus, your clarity, even when they feel like they do not understand a thing. I'm asking you to touch them in their minds and even in their hearts on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Rearrange some things and change some things, Father God. Change their one track man the way they used to think, God, them old thoughts. I'm asking you to sever it on today, Father God. Get them a newness in their mind on today, Father God. Renew their minds on today, Father God. Go on the inside and touch the neurons, God. Oh God, he can't let a local see. I can't let a local see. Be electrolytes in their brain, God. I'm asking you to signify them, God. He called my mind. I can't shut it in I can see. Oh God, I can't let a local see. Open up their mentality state, God, of understanding and even be that in the local Shia and even comprehension. Let us not lean to our own understanding. Touch the minds on today. He can't let the local Shana. Oh God, let them not be warped in bondage of old. Oh, my mind, I can't let it in the local Open up the minds, God. 
Open up the man's soul today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that everything that you have me to speak, Father God, it'll stimulate some things. It'll change some things. It'll rearrange some things, God. He come in it'll go shun it like I see. Oh God, the thoughts, the thoughts, the thoughts, touch the thoughts, God. That your people would allow your freedom to ring in their hearts. They would allow your freedom to ring in their minds. They would allow your freedom to ring in their thoughts. They would allow your freedom to ring in their lives, God. That they will not be in bondage. Oh God, he come in the local sea. Loose the shackles on the man. Loose the shackles of the man. Oh, loose some things that's embedded inside of the heart. Father God, in the name of Jesus, and let them not be our kashata. Give your people the clearness of the vision. Open up their vision tunnels. Open up their air gates. Oh, my mind, be our kashata and our kashia. We are kashata and our kashata. Newness in the minds. Newness in the minds. Touch the minds, God. He cut that and our little kashata. Oh, God, I of Jesus. Don't let your people be deceived by what they see or what they hear, God. Preventing them from what they believe and what they cling to, God. I'm asking you to do it on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, because I know you can. And I know you delight in doing so, Father God. Oh God, I'm asking you at the Oh God, the That the Oh Touch your people, God. Touch them in their hearts and their minds, Father God. He needed to go see and even in their bodies, God. Touch him right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. He cut it and go see. Touch him right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. He cut it and go see. I take it and then look go see. That your people will know without a shadow of a doubt, God, that you are real. He cut it and go see. That you are real and there is none other like you. That your people will know without a shadow of a doubt, Father God, in the name of Jesus. That you are the covering, Father God. That you are the mediator of us all. The mediator of us all. Oh, mama, ni akashan, ne de loko si. Oh, mama, ni akashan. Oh, God, I'm asking you right now, Father God, to put those of you on my tongue. Give me what to say and even how to say it. Cut ni de loko si. That I may help to win a soul, God. I'm asking you to cover and comfort your people on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. He cut the local sea and let your will be done within their lives and their minds and even with the local sun. Oh God, I'm asking you to saturate this place with your anointing, Father God. Let your glory rest inside of this place on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. He cut the local sea. Oh God, and govern over the Akashan de Loko Sea. Oh God, he call my mani Akashan de Loko Sea. Oh God, he call my mani Akashan de Loko Sea. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. We crying out to you right now, God. We cut the local sea. That you rely your angels to encamp themselves in here. East, west, north, and south. From the roof all the way down to the very foundation around the entire perimeter, God. Send your ministering angels up and down each and every last one of these pews, God. And meet the needs of your people, Father God. Come and your blood and hide us behind your cross. Touch your people on today, God. In a most unusual way. And let your will be done in this place on today and every other day, God. In your son Jesus' name. 
Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We just want to glorify God. Don't stop praising him. We want to glorify him. Because he is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is great and he is greatly to be praised. And so many times that we allow our circumstances and our situation to put us in a place of bondage where we cannot set ourselves free because of what we see or either what we hear, what we feel in our bodies, what we experience in our emotions. We always allow ourselves to get into that place of being shackled and chained up. We allow ourselves to get into that place of feeling defeated and depressed and sad. We allow ourselves to get into that place where we think that there's no more hope or that it cannot be returned unto us. But what we need to know and realize and even understand that God is a God of hope. He thought about us even when we was not even thinking about ourselves. He thought about us then that we may have life right now. He did not want us to be in bondage. He didn't want us to be clinging to the dust. He didn't want us to be in doubt. He had so much compassion for us until he sent his son Jesus that we may be totally and completely healed. But we deny that power that we have within our our own selves because 90% of the times we contradict the very words that we read not applying them to our lives making it out of a lie when God is not a God that shall lie and his word is true his word is true we have a tendency of not standing on his word in the belief of what his word is saying because of what we see or what we hear or even what we are going through we hear so many different things. We experience so many different things until it causes us to fall into a place of fear. It causes us to fall into a place of defeat. It causes us to fall into a place of doubt. It causes us to fall into all these different other categories, all these different chambers, chambers of bondage. That's what it is, chambers of bondage. But today we want to let freedom ring. We want to let freedom ring and knowing and believing what God said and what he did through Jesus that we are free. We got to know and realize that we are free. We are totally and we are completely free. It does not matter what we're going through. It does not matter what we are experiencing. It does not matter how much of it we're experiencing. We are totally and completely free. But we do not cling to this freedom. We do not cling to this thing that Jesus did for us and knowing and believing that we are totally and completely free because of the situation that we are in, because of what we are going through because of what we are experiencing because of what we see because of what we hear because we cannot feel it because we cannot touch it because we cannot experience it the way that we want to experience it we have a tendency of falling victimized to the doubt that is even out in the atmosphere because of what has not yet manifested or what we have not seen that has come into existence. But we need to understand and we need to know and realize that God is the way maker. He is the one that can do these things for us. He is the only one that can do these things for us. It's not nothing that we have or can accomplish within our own selves. It's nothing that nobody else can do for us because Jesus already did it. We always get on the phone and we ask, well, could you help me do this? Or could you do that? Or what you see? Or could you pray for me? Or God already allowed Jesus to come down and do these things for us. And that is to simply set us free. We are not free from even our own mind and our thoughts because of what we see. When we look through our eye tunnel, when we look through our visionary tunnel, it causes us to be bound by the things that we see. And so we cause our own self to be trained and shackled and get into a place where we cannot claim our freedom. We want our freedom. We hear that we can be free. We believe to a certain point that we can be free, but we do not embrace our freedom because of the current situation and circumstance that we are going through. This is why we cannot claim our freedom. 
This is why we have not had our total and complete freedom. This is why we have not even experienced our total and complete freedom. Because of the very things that we go through. Because of the very things that we see. And we cause that to hinder us from claiming our freedom. Because the Bible declares that we were free when Jesus came down here. Jesus came down here for a purpose. He knew that we were weak in certain areas. He knew that certain things going to come into our lives and was going to cause us to be in a certain place. He knew it even before it came about because God kept saying that we was hard-headed and stiff-necked. He kept saying it and he wanted to destroy us but Jesus kept saying, Lord, don't destroy him, don't destroy him. He was our mediator even before we acknowledged him as being our mediator. He was standing in a gap for us even before we knew. He came down here that we could totally and completely be free. He came down here that we could totally and completely be able to receive totality and completeness. But we we as people, we have a tendency of not being able to see that thing. We have a tendency of not understanding this. So I want to help y'all guys on today. We want to go to the book of Ezekiel. We want to go to the book of Ezekiel. We're going to start in the book of Ezekiel. No, actually, we're going to start in the book of Isaiah. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. We're going to go to the book of Isaiah. When we go to the book of Isaiah... It's going to help us to really understand some things because it's, it's, it's a familiar passage. It's a familiar scripture because it's done been preached, especially on Easter. And But even in the midst of this scripture being preached, we never did get the full magnitude of it because of the way that it was preached to us. It was preached to us in a way that We didn't completely and totally understand it. So let's just go to Isaiah chapter 53. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 53. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 53. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your word, God. Thank you, Jesus, for your word, God. Isaiah 53. And we're going to start. And verse 5. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. We thank you for your word. This word ministered to me today. It ministered to me this morning when he had woke me up. And I was trying to figure out, well, Lord, you haven't given me anything for the preach about today. And I'm trying to figure out, well, what am I going to preach about? And it was not until after I had got out of the shower and all that day he started ministering to me and talking to me and telling me some things. And the name of the sermon today is going to be Let Freedom Ring. The name of the sermon today is going to be Let Freedom Ring. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to start at Isaiah 53. And we're going to start at verse 5 and 6. Actually, we're going to do 4, 5, and 6. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Everybody don't know what transgressions mean. Transgressions is a breaking of a moral or legal code. It's a violation of a law, a command or a duty. A transgression is not going by the rules. He was bruised for our iniquities. When you bruise something or someone, it hurts. It hurts. You can hit yourself and then it'll hurt at that moment and then 
a few days later you got this black bruise or this purple bruise and, and you touch it and it still hurts. He was bruised for our iniquities. Iniquities is a wicked act or thing. It's sin. It's immoral conduct or practices harmful or offensive to society. It's morally unacceptable. It's simply plainly said evil. That's what an iniquity is. It's sin. It's evil. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Stripes is a stroke or a blow with a rod or a lash, a hard strike with a part of the body or an instrument. We're in Isaiah chapter 53, verses four, five, and six. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let freedom ring. Let freedom ring. Why we won't let freedom ring? Because we are still in bondage. The Bible declares that Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. We're gonna we 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 gonna we're gonna go. We're, we're gonna get just a little bit deeper. Let's go to St. John before I go back to Isaiah and I'm explain that to you guys. See to let freedom ring, we have to embrace the, 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 the thing that Jesus gave us, and that was life. We have to embrace it. The only way that we're going to be able to let freedom ring is not to allow anything to be exalted higher than him. Let me give you some examples. Let me give you some examples. Jesus said that he came that he can heal the brokenhearted. He can mend that which was torn apart. He can reconcile a thing. See, we in bondage when we lose that hope and to believe in that it can be fixed. We believe within our hearts and even within our minds that what we see, it, 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 it's not going to change. Why? Because we are in that current situation. We are in that current circumstance. We allow ourselves to be bound. We allow ourselves to be bound, not understanding that Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. He wanted to, let's, let's go to St. John. Let's go to St. John chapter 10. Let's go to St. John chapter 10. See, we go to the wrong things and the wrong people and look for the solutions in the wrong places instead of going to Jesus for it. When we need a bill paid, we go to our bank account or we, or we go to somebody else to borrow that money or we, we expect a thing when we get ready to get paid or how about if you ain't even got a job? We, we, Listen, we allow ourselves to be encaged and entrapped and shackled instead of simply allowing ourselves to be free, knowing that God is our provider. Jesus provided us a way that we won't cling to the dust. How are we clinging to the dust? By what we see and what we hear, by our experiences. We allow what we experience to cause us to be so low or to be so depressed or to be lonely or to be sad or not having no hope and to believe in a thing is going to happen or a thing is going to change. Knowing Jesus said he is the way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only way that we'll be able to get past that thing that we see, that we think if we cannot get past. He is the only way that is going to allow us to be able to go over that bridge where we thought could not be built high enough to get over that water. That railroad track that we can run across because that train keeps coming by real fast. 
We have to know and understand. St. John chapter 10. I am the door. Verse 9. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. He is the only way to freedom. We cannot allow freedom to reign if we do not believe that we can get any and everything that we need through Jesus. Freedom will never come to us if we think and believe that he is not able. Listen. The thief, who is the thief? The adversary. Come not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's what he want to do. He want to kill any and every thought that is good. In and every word that God has ever spoken over your life. He wants to make you believe that it is not so. He want to steal your joy. He want to steal your confidence. He want to steal your hope. He want to steal your dignity. He want to steal any and everything from you that he possibly can. That God ever promised you. That he ever showed you. That he ever spoke over you. And that you ever even believe. He want to change your belief into disbelief. He want to kill you. How he going to kill you? By keeping you in that dark place. I ask God, I pray today that he give us tunnel vision. Because when you in that tunnel, it ain't no light down in that tunnel. Even going through the tunnels, when you going through water or going, any tunnel, it ain't light. It ain't no light. And it gets dark. I ask God to give us some tunnel vision. Because we need some tunnel vision, baby, in order to know and believe that God is the way. Jesus is the way. The truth and the life. The enemy wants to destroy any dreams that you may have. You may be feeling one type of way and on your high horse today. And then something may happen or you may see something. And next thing you know, you feeling all down and low. He wants to destroy that, that good thought. That good thing. That good word. It's only one way. That we can get to. Who and what. We need to get to. And that's through Jesus. We need to let freedom ring. We need to let freedom ring. We don't let freedom ring. We need to know. The Bible declares that I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giving his life for the sheep. And that's when we went to Isaiah. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He knew that we wasn't going to be able to get it right. The enemy always goes up to Jesus. Goes up to God. He goes up to the throne. And he always making accusations about us. He always saying certain things about us. He wants to tempt us. He wants us to get into that place where we cannot feel like we, we, we undefeated. He don't want us to think that we are conquerors. He said by his stripes we are healed. When he say that, he's not just talking about in our bodies. He's talking about in our lives. He talking about in our cotton picking lives. We walk around here and we get the feeling all discouraged and get all depressed and get the feeling this type of way and, feel, and then fear sets in. When fear sets in, we are bound up all over again. Because we're afraid that ain't nobody going to do this. We're afraid ain't nobody going to do that. We're afraid won't nobody accept us. We're afraid won't nobody love us. We're afraid that we won't get this or we won't get that. We fear everything. We fear we ain't going to have no money, no roof over our head, no love in our life. We feel so much into it is bondage. It's all bondage. Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. He wanted us to simply be free from dead. He wanted us to be free from dead, clinging to the dust. He wanted us to be free from death. Death for what? Death of our very vitality. 
I'm going to look that word up right quick. He just gave me that word. Death from vitality. Death from vitality. That's where the enemy wants us to be. Lively and animated character. Power of enduring. God is awesome. Vitality. He just the enemy wants us to have death from vitality. The peculiarity distinguishing the living from the non-living. I when the master give me some words, you better believe them words are true. Listen to me. Capacity to live and develop. Vitality. Let freedom ring. The capacity to live and to develop. The quality or state of having abundant or intense activity. See, he said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. He don't want you just to have a regular old life. He wants you to have a life in an abundance. He don't want you to live no mediocre life. He don't want you to live a life that is less than what you think that you deserve. Because the Bible declares what a man thinks of, so shall he be. He don't want us to be in a place where we say, oh, I can't have that and I can't have this. God said he gave us the keys. He gave us the key. We won't need to put the Inside the door and turn the door and open up the door. And where's the door? Jesus is the door. He is the way that we could get any and everything that we won't need or even desire. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all else will be added on to you. You ain't got to worry about this or that or this or that or that. God said that he sent him that we may have life and have it more in abundance. He don't want us to have it just in abundance. Do y'all know what an abundance is? An abundance is an overflow. It is more than enough. It is not room enough to receive. In an abundance. When I was in prayer today, he said plenteous. He's given us plenteous. And yet we still complain. We engage our own self and be in bondage our own self into thinking and believing that it is not so. And that is what the enemy wants us to believe. Jesus came down here and he bore so much for us, but we deny the power. We deny the power. Let's go back to Isaiah. Listen to this. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He knew without a shadow of a doubt that we was breaking the laws. He knew without a shadow of a doubt that we could not even keep the laws. We could not even go to God even on our own. A priest had to go. But because it was an individual thing, an individual sin, and instead of the, the priest coming and, and, and getting a goat, that's 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 what it that, that's that's where they get that from a scapegoat. He would bring a goat, go inside the temple, and he would pray for the people. God forgive them. And then when they got through, he'd come back out. He would put all the sin up on the goat. And then he would take the goat out of the camp and loose it. Then they would, they would sacrifice the goat for blood. And listen, these things, they knew we was not going to uphold and do right. We were breaking these laws. We were breaking these laws and he did not want us to constantly have to constantly die. Die. We was dead, y'all. We were dead until Jesus came and gave us our life back. We were doomed until Jesus came and gave us our life back. He bore these things for us. The Bible says, surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace. He went through chastisement so that we can have peace. So why we ain't got no peace? 
peace, y'all. We ain't got no peace because we worrying about that bill. We ain't got no peace because we worrying about that car, that house, that man, that woman, that child, that boy. We worrying about the cares of the world. We worrying about having that big old house or having that nice old uh, Lexus truck. We worrying about having all these other things when Jesus clearly came down here and said he gave us the key. He gave us the keys to have life in abundance and everything that we want and even desire. All you got to do, he say, delight in me, I give you desires of your heart. So he going to give you everything that you want. We will not allow freedom to ring in our lives. We will not allow freedom to ring in our lives because it's so many people in our ears. It's so many people in our ears. And this and they saying that. And this and they saying that. And this and they saying that. And you shouldn't do this. And you shouldn't do that. And you that, that, you will not allow God, Jesus, to give you that freedom. Let freedom reign. Let freedom reign. We need to allow freedom to ring in our lives. We need to allow freedom to ring in our lives. Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13, verses 20 and 21. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. The only way that you're going to allow freedom to ring in your life is if you allow God to do his will in your life. We read in Isaiah that we do what we want to do or how we want to do it, when we want to do it, when we think we should do it, or even how often that we should do it. Freedom. In order for freedom to ring in our lives, what we must do is allow God to do that perfect thing inside of us. He said he gave us the keys. We need to open up that door. Put that key inside that door, which is Jesus, and allow Jesus to make you free. By his stripes we are healed. You can be healed from your past. You could be healed from that broken heart. You could be healed from that defeat that you feel, that depressed, all this stuff. You can simply be healed from because he is our way maker. He is our way maker. We do not allow him to be magnified in our lives because we exalt any and everything higher than him. We exalt that situation, that concern, that problem, that 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 anything. It does, I does not. It does not matter what it is. We allow that thing to be exalted higher than God, higher than Jesus. We are not free. We will not allow freedom to ring because what we dwell on the past. We dwell on that thing that that person said. We dwell on that thing that person did. It's almost like the enemy keep bringing it to our thoughts and to our minds to put us back into that place of bitterness or hate or anger. When we get into that place of freedom, we got to cling on to it. We got to cling on to it and we got to hold on to it. And it does not matter what we see or what we hear. We will not allow it to deceive us into believing something different from what God has already said or even showed us. Lord, give us that tunnel vision that we can see in that dark place. Restore us into that hope that we can see into that place of, 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 of being restored. We want to be restored. We want to be restored into freedom. We want to be restored into freedom. We want to get back into that place where we were before. That's what we want to do. 
because by his stripes we are healed. And that's in every area of our lives. Natural, spiritual, emotional, physical, technical, in your finances, in any of those things. Any of those things. Any of them. This is what the Lord had me, gave me for you guys on today. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. Dear God, I'm coming to you on today on behalf of your people, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Because there's so many times, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that we don't understand that when you sent your son Jesus, that you sent him that we may be able to be free. We want freedom to ring in our lives, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that we will not be bound and shackled, God, to the cares of this world and the things that we see and hear. Lord, I'm coming to you asking you to give your people that tunnel vision. I'm coming to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, asking you to give your people, Father God, in the name of Jesus, a, a newness. I'm coming to you on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, asking you to give your people some direction. Lord, there's so many times, God, in the name of Jesus, that we hold these things so close to our heart, Lord, until we're not knowing, Father God, that you are our mediator. You were our mediator, Father God, even before we knew that you were our mediator. <laughs> oh, God, you was making a stand for us, Father God, even when the Lord God wanted to destroy us. Jesus, you, God, you stood in a gap for us. I'm asking you to touch your people, God. Touch them in their minds and touch them in their hearts, Lord, in the name of Jesus. That they would know, Father God, that you came that we may be totally and completely free. Even from our own selves, our own thoughts, God. Even from experiences in our lives, God. You, Lord. You came, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Not only that we can be free, Father God, but you wanted us to have it in abundance of this freedom. Lord, I'm asking you to overshadow this freedom in the midst of your people, God. I'm asking you to overshadow this freedom, Father God, in the midst of your people, God. I'm asking you to give them that freedom that they need, God. I'm asking you to give them the freedom that they need in their finances, God, in their homes, in their lives, God, in, 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 in their situations, Lord. You know everything that they need, God, and you said in your word, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you came that we should be free. Your liberty, God, who you said free is truly free indeed, Lord. I'm asking you to give us that freedom, God. Even concerning our children, Lord, touch them. Give them the freedom that they need in their minds and in their hearts, God. And our loved ones, Lord, saved, unsaved, near, or even far. Give them the freedom that they need, Father God. Let them experience your abundance of life, God. According to your will, perfect it. Perfected inside of their lives, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that they won't fall in a place of degradation and segregation, God. Perfect it, Lord. I'm asking you to do it even now, God, because I know you can and I know that you delight in doing so. I know that you are able, God, and I know that you are concerned about us. I thank you for the concern. I thank you for the love and the passion that you have towards us. God, touch each and every individual today, God. Cover them in your blood and hide them behind your cross. And even give them your strength on today, God. Give them your strength and even your direction, God. In your son Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. I'm going to give you guys some yellow sheets of paper and red pens. And I want y'all to just Write down all that stuff that you could be free today. That you could be free. Anything that's on your heart, on your mind, if you're standing in the gap for somebody, if you're worried about somebody, if you're thinking about somebody, I want you to write all that stuff down. Write it down that we could be free today. We want to be free. Let freedom ring in our lives and knowing and believing that it don't matter how hard it is. Or even what we going through. That God is not able to fix it. 
he sent his son Jesus that we may be able to experience this freedom. We do not have to cling to the dust. We do not have to allow ourselves to be caged and shackled in our minds and in our thoughts by the very things that we see in our visionary, in our vision, in what we hear in our hearing. We do not have to. I want you all to write down all that stuff that, that got you feeling like you, you chained up and you shackled and you can't break free. Because God is a judge, he is the lawyer, he is the way maker, he is the doctor, he is the physician, he is the oncologist, he is the gynecologist, he is any and everything that we need him to be. We don't want to be left out of that liberty which is freedom. We may not understand what's going on in the world and all this other different other kind of stuff because we see so much death. But we want to make sure that we are free from it. We want to make sure and understanding that by his stripes we are healed. I'm going to read that scripture just one more time. We need to understand it. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. He was chastised for us. That we may be able to let freedom ring in our lives. So whatever he's doing, we don't want him to do it without us. We want to be into our proper positions. We don't want to be clinging to the dust. We don't want ourselves to be into that place of being shackled and chained because we feel like we ain't got enough money. We ain't got enough of this. We ain't got enough of that. And I can't do this and I can't do this. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. All things. God says that you weren't just an overcomer. He said you are more than a conqueror. So you just not gonna conquer things. You are more than a conqueror. Whatever he's doing, we want to be part of it. We want to be part of it. Oh God, touch right now, God. Touch your people in their minds and their hearts and in their bodies, Father God. Even as they write down these things, Father God, that trouble them. Touch right now, Father God. He cold my mind, it don't go see. Even as they share these hidden things in their heart, God. These things, Father God, that they never even speak about. They never even tell nobody about. They never even discuss this hidden stuff, this secret stuff. Let your people know, Father God. Let them know, Jesus, that you are the freeway. <laughs> he the freeway. He the freeway. Let freedom ring. He the freeway. He the only way. He is the truth and the life. He gave us the keys to the kingdom. He did that for us. He did it for us. Lord, we thank you, God, for the sacrifice of your blood. We thank you for the reassurance of your word. We thank you for the freedom, God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the freedom in our minds. We thank you for the freedom in our hearts and our lives and our bodies, God. We thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for the freedom. 
of having a free will. Because we could have been somewhere else, Father God. But we came here today, God, to get your word. We thank you for the free will, God. The freedom. We thank you for the freedom, God. We thank you for that freedom, God. And for that hope and that restoration. Lord, we tell you we love you. Y'all can put that stuff on the altar. Y'all can put it on the altar. I, I pray I said something that will help you guys to know and understand that we need to embrace our freedom. We need to let freedom ring. He came that we may have life and have it more abundant. Not that we, we, we should live mediocre lives. What a man think of so shall he be. Think on good things. Think on good thoughts. If something happened or occurred in your life to somebody like that you love or you see something going wrong for somebody, pray for them. Ask God to set them free. Ask them to set them free because even in the midst of going through a thing or experience a thing, you still can have peace and freedom. And knowing, Lord, whatever your will is, you still going to be free. You still gonna be, you won't be bound and, and shackled and chained and your back won't be up against the wall where you feel like you ain't got nowhere of escape. In freedom. I remember when they wanted to send me to prison for first degree murder. I remember it so well. And in the midst, I was like, Lord, See, when we be going through stuff, and in, in the midst of it, we allow our emotions to cause us to react a certain kind of way. And then we regret our actions. We regret our actions. And so, in the midst of them taking me to jail, I was in jail for about two and a half, almost three weeks. And so in the midst of me being in jail, I was praying because the lawyer kept telling me that that's first degree murder. That man done died. And he's on life support now. And they trying to keep him alive. And so I'm just crying and I'm like, Lord, I say, I just really was trying to defend myself out of fear. That's an emotion. Out of fear and rage and anger and just simply being tired. I reacted a certain type of way and now I regret my actions because I got two children and they talking about sending me to prison for the rest of my life. What am I going to do? And so, I just was praying and I was worried and I wasn't free naturally because I was in jail and I wasn't free mentally because I was thinking about the consequences and the things that could happen to me. I wasn't free because I, it, it, it was just like an instant replay of stuff that had occurred that led up to my actions. I wasn't free. And then so I grabbed my Bible and I started praying and reading my Bible. And in the midst of it, I read the scripture that says to be content in your current situation. Because we don't have no control over anything. And this is why I always say, let's not allow our emotions to cause us to react the way that we may regret our actions. Because I experienced it my own self. And so, I 
became free when I was locked up in prison and they wanted to give me life. And I said, Lord, you know what? I say, Lord, you know the truth and whatever your will is. Because there's a scripture in the Bible that say everything that you do, you got to pay for it. If it's good, you gotta pay for it. If it's bad, you gotta pay for it. If it's it, it just doesn't matter. You're gonna pay for that. You got to pay your dues to society. And so, I got content and I got free. And so when my lawyer came back and told me, she said, well, you got to go for your preliminary. And then a preliminary, they wanted to wait a few more months for me to be able to get out to go because I wanted to trial jury. I wanted the jury, and so they wanted to do a trial. And, and then, so in the midst, I got so content until I say, Lord, you know what? If I go up, I go up. Just cover my children. Just like that. Two days later, the lawyer came and said, We are releasing you. We're releasing you because we gathered in the self defense. Release me. Because it was nothing that I could, I did not just get free in my mind and settled in my heart. I got free literally. Because it does not, we as people have to allow freedom to reign. We have to allow freedom to reign. This is why he sent his son Jesus. We should not be all tied up. And in and, 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 and our mind shackled up because of a bill we can't pay, because of a job we don't have, because of a car we can't drive, because of a man we can't tame, because of a woman we can't tame, because of what we don't have we buy ourselves. We cannot allow ourselves to be chained and shackled. We got to allow freedom to reign. We got to allow freedom to simply reign. We have no control over anything. He said he came that we may have life and we may have it abundantly. Therefore, we do not have to allow ourselves to be chained up when he died for us. He died for us to be free. You want me to tell you why he died? To give us a reassurance. He wanted to reassure us that all was well. Are y'all following me? Y'all following me? I'm going to pray one more time. Just one more time that we may really understand. Lord, touch. That we may understand the magnitude. That we may understand, God. What you did for us was that we could be free. Touch us in our minds, God. Touch us in our minds, God. That we can be totally and completely free. Touch us in our hearts. Don't let the cares of this world and the things of this life to have us in a place, God, where we're not free. Give us that freedom. Let us, let us experience that freedom in the magnitude of your glory. Because you said so, God. We don't know what you got planned, but we know that plan is good. And we thank you even now, God, in your son Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Freedom. I'm going to give you some paper, too, to write down some stuff. Everybody else that wrote down some stuff, please put it on the altar. Put it on the altar. I hope I said something I read from Isaiah 53. I hope I said something that can help that y'all would know and understand freedom 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 we want freedom and everything happened for a reason everything happens for a reason We're going to get ready to get our tithes and our offering. If anybody need an envelope, please raise your hand.
Anybody want some water? We'll give you guys some water. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord knows what's best for us. I love y'all so much. I thank God that y'all came and pressed y'all way. Everybody you don't see, please pray for them. Because we don't know what's going on and what's happening with them. Some people came by earlier this weekend. Left their ties and offering with me. Jesus. I love you guys so much. 